So good morning in France here. It's first day of our canal trip. It's been 10 years since we crossed the French canals with our sailboat. We're gonna do a refresher on canal life and take a houseboat for two weeks down the French canals. And this is the Nivernay. This time on Distant Shores, we return to the French waterways while construction of our new Anxel Orion 49 sailboat continues in the Netherlands. This canal cruise provides the perfect opportunity to demonstrate boat handling techniques as we take you through numerous locks, under very low bridges, and through narrow canals, while exploring the French countryside, sampling the wine and local cuisine as we go. Hi, welcome to Joigny. You're very welcome to Locaboat Joigny. For nearly 50 years, the Locaboat Company has specialized in canal riverboats designed for the waterways of France and Europe. They now have a fleet of 330 of these small waterway cruisers designed for bareboat operation, meaning the renters drive the boat themselves. Our crew seems to have got enthusiastically into the concept. <laughs> you can get used to powerboating, did you say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this old storage, very clever. Will you show us around this beautiful boat? Yes. Uh... You just leave it there? Yes, if I leave it. Oh, the joy of being on the canals. I'm back. <laughs> wow, it's a whole huge saloon in here. Yes, and look at the beautiful flowers they've <laughs> left us, and <laughs> treats, and candles. We're given a rundown on the major systems, including batteries and inverter. From the battery, that's yes, okay. From the battery. But yes. anything else to plug in, only if we're plugged in at the marina. Exactly. Um, yeah, so we could, you say, charge the phone there would be okay. Yes. Yeah. Look at this beautiful place. We are getting a quick check out on the boat to make sure we're not going to crash it into anything. We're in Joigny on board a loco boat. We have this for two weeks to explore in the French canals. You do not need to have a license to take one of these boats for a trip on the inland waterways of France. These boats are made with everyone in mind, both the beginner boater and the experienced one. The boat is designed to allow you to drive the vessel after a short instructional initiation beforehand. So after a tour of the electrical system, plumbing and general interior familiarity, we head out for a quick check of boat handling skills. The boat has a single inboard engine with conventional rudder. There is also a bow thruster, and perhaps most important, a number of strategically placed built-in black rubber fenders to protect the hull as you maneuver under bridges, through tight canals, and in the locks. Joining us on this adventure are Mike and Marcy, Bill and Lori, and Lori's mother, Laura. This is boating. I'm at a patio table on my patio chairs. Beautiful scenery going by. Fresh Sunday baguette and some coffee. Fresh baguettes. So good and coffee. Twelve years ago, we crossed France with our 49-foot sailboat, first by sailing up the Seine River to Paris, then there are various potential routes from Paris to connect us to the rivers to the Mediterranean. All are shallow with just 1.8 meters depth, 5 foot 11. The first is the Marne River and Canal route, the Burgoyne or Burgundy route, the Nivernais, and what we chose that time, the Loire River. This time we'll explore the Nivernais, which starts with a few of the larger locks before entering the small canals. Look at this cute little place. This is a canalized river, so it's got the more uh, river banks kind of look to it. Very beautiful, I'll come through some cute little villages. And we've been underway about six hours today already, I guess, starting at nine and it's now four in the afternoon, wow. Most towns have a convenient public key where you can tie up for the night and likely get power and water as well as easy access to explore the historic old villages which sprang up along the waterway, many dating from the 1600s.
A bridge has existed on this site for 2,000 years, regularly being rebuilt in a form similar to the modern one, which dates from 1857. I feel like I have to bend down. You guys got to come see this bridge. This is the actual start of the narrow Nivernay Canal, with just 11 feet of vertical clearance and 5 meters wide. That's just 16 feet. So this is the first of our little tiny locks. These ones are just the 5 meters wide, so the boats fit in with just uh, one foot on each side. And uh, we leave Auxerre and head down the canal to Nivernay. So this is the start of the Nivernay. We've never been in this canal before. It looks very cute and charming and some of these locks we get to do ourselves, which is fun too. And it's a perfect summer day. It's the end of August, but it's absolutely spectacularly beautiful and beautiful weather. Let's go down the Canal de Nivernay. There are over 8,000 kilometers of waterways in France alone, and many thousands more in the rest of Europe. Back in 2012, we crossed the English Channel, then went up the Seine River to Paris, and across the little canals to the rivers down to the Mediterranean. This trip was a very fun 10-week exploration of inland France, and can be found as five half-hour episodes in Distant Shores Season 9. Many boats like this have just one engine and a rudder. With the rudder situated behind the propeller, the engine can generate a strong turning force on the boat when the rudder is held hard over. But notice the boat pivots around her center, not turning like a car, so the turn doesn't work if you are against a dock or another boat. If we are docked port side too, the prop wash just drives the stern up against the dock, but because the stern can't move, the bow doesn't swing out as we hoped. The answer is to move the bow out first. In this case, we'll nudge with the bow thruster. I usually bring the bow a bit further out, so we can then steer back toward the wall, which feels wrong initially, but this moves the stern off the dock, allowing us to continue forward freely and turn whichever way we need to. In these tight locks, the situation is similar. If the boat is up against a wall, you can't use the helm alone to move off. Instead, use a thruster to move the bow out a bit then use the rudder to push the stern off the wall and quickly recenter to continue out. I'm going to center the wheel. One, two, three. So it's centered now. Then we need to center the boat with the thruster. Ready on the bow line, Marcy? Thank you. Stern line, please. Okay. So the trick is when you're in the locks, you can't, when you turn a boat normally, the stern moves and the boat turns. But you can't move the stern because we're so tight in the lock. So in this case, what we've got to do is turn the boat by moving the bow a little bit. And then that actually... Turn lines aboard. Thanks, Mike. I'll just center that up. Now, if we want to move the stern away from the wall, that's all you can do with the wheel. Well, let's see, we're a little bit too close to this wall, so I'll just move it away and then keep centering the bow, and you can kind of crab the boat over in the, in the lock chamber, even though we've only got one foot on each side. Merci, monsieur.
Oh, it's cold all of a sudden. Mm. These wine cellars are kept at 53 degrees Fahrenheit to store wine for 12 to 24 months. And after a hot day in the sun, this feels great. This enormous wine cellar dates back to the Middle Ages when it was a quarry producing stone for Paris, including the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Later it was discovered the enormous cave kept a temperature of 12 degrees C, perfect for wine storage, and today has nearly 6 million bottles in stock with room for a tasting wine bar as well. Cheers, Cher. Cheers. Mike and Mercy, cheers. cheers. Yes. <laughs> cheers. Wonderful day. Oh, Beautiful day. What a mm -hmm. great day. Thank you. Now, this is a pretty narrow spot. It's dividing the river bank. So, this side is soft, and the other side is granite or uh, limestone. In areas where the river wasn't suitable for boat traffic, the builders of the canal dug out the channels, and these parts tend to be quite narrow, often barely wide enough for a boat to pass, which in this case happens to contain fans of distant shores. Hello, bonjour. Rusty is in shores? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Canadian, American. <laughs> Canadian. I like your, your, I like your former boat. Oh, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> We're meeting lots of sailors enjoying a canal boating holiday on the waterways, including this group ahead of us. We do about eight locks per day on this route, and by now we're getting lots of practice tossing lines. It hasn't taken long to get our locking routine worked out. Technology. Very nice. <laughs> Look, French technology. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, miracle. It's a miracle. So the magic is the second side is done and you don't have to run around, otherwise, you run to the other side. Yeah. We're lost on the way to the bakery, but we haven't seen anyone carrying a baguette, so we can't be very close. Search for the bakery continues. So these cruises are a lot of fun. Uh, it's well within the realm of uh, normal boaters who've had any kind of experience at all, powerboat handling. I think the biggest thing to worry about, of course, is you've got a 50-foot long boat, and if you haven't had anything more than smaller boats, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But they're well and truly rubbered up with uh, rubber fenders built into the side of the boat, uh, different lower down for the locks and higher up for coming into the lock walls and the bow is well protected too, so if you're just pretty gentle with her, I think most people can get along with handling this kind of a boat. And uh, it's a really fun way to see France. We've got to see all these little towns that have been so much fun. Um, going to get a baguette at the boulangerie, patisserie every morning. Uh, going into the churches and seeing the little, uh, little old towns. Because you're really going right through history on a boat like this. They started building these canals in the 1700s and this canal I think was done in the 1800s. So you're basically getting to operate 200 year old history 
It's been a great holiday. Highly recommended. We hope you've enjoyed the voyage too. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more Distant Shores adventures. And if you're looking for a special gift for the sailor in your life, check out Distant Shores HD downloads or DVDs. All 157 half-hour ad-free episodes of the Distant Shores TV series are available in collector's gift packs, including Season 9, which features five full episodes about traveling the French canals from the English Channel south to the Mediterranean, as well as an exciting transatlantic crossing to the Caribbean for tropical island cruising. See the link below for details. Join us next time as we get back to boat building in the Netherlands to check on the progress of our new Enksail Orion 49 sailboat. And throw in a comment below to let us know what new topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching.